In this video, I'm going to be going over the new dynamic taxonomy child fields. Uh, the features, I'm going to go ahead and show you an example real quick so you can see how it works. And then we'll actually go through and set up a couple of them in the job category taxonomy to show you how to set everything up and, and give you a couple examples on that. So to start off, we'll go ahead and take a look at this. You'll notice I have this job industry field right here. I created this as a custom taxonomy and I use, actually use pods for that. You can find a tutorial for that on my website. But as you can see here, if you look, you'll notice that I've got all these different fields already set up here for this example that I'm, I just mentioned I'm going to show you. Now I'll show you how this looks on the front end here real quick. So you can just get an example and then we'll go through and create one. So as you'll see here now, whenever I click on the job industry one, you'll notice there's only four different options that are listed. Whereas if you look under here, you'll notice there are a bunch of different options. That's because what I did was under the job industry field, I had actually went to the advanced tab and checked the new feature to show in a separate drop down for the child uh, taxonomy terms. And so let's go ahead and check it out and see how it works. So you'll notice here now I've got these four and whenever I select one, you'll notice it dynamically creates another drop down window that it shows. And you'll notice here, then we have other settings we can choose. And you'll notice here, the original field is a multiple select field, whereas this one right here is a single select. We'll dig into that a little bit more, but I'll just go ahead and show you how some of this stuff works. And you'll notice we have different placeholders. Please select all related IT industries. Uh, and you can select a couple different things here. You know, and that's, that's basically how it works. There's a bunch of different configurations you can set up and ways you can set it up. But to uh, get you started, I just wanted to give you a, a quick example. And now we'll go ahead and go through and set up the job category one, which currently only has four options in it. But we'll go ahead and start adding some child terms, go through it and get it set up. So let's move on over to the job categories area. Now you'll notice here we've only got these four. And you notice there's not really anything over here either. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. And once you have installed the updated version of the field editor, you will now see these new setting fields on any taxonomies that are associated with a job listing or a resume. And so you'll notice here we have this one here. And if you actually go in to edit any existing ones or any ones you've already created, you notice you also have these settings here as well. Now we'll go through each one of these once we start doing this, but let's go ahead and, go ahead and head back here. So the first thing we're going to need to do is because this current taxonomy doesn't have any child terms, we can't really use it for the dynamic stuff. So let's go ahead and add some child terms in here. So we're going to start off here and I'll do, uh, we'll just do something simple. We'll say web, put that under design. I'm going to go ahead and add that one. And we'll do uh, you know, logo, we'll put that under design. And then let's go ahead and change the parent. We'll change development and we'll do um, you know, PHP, uh, JavaScript. WordPress and so now you'll notice here we have one level of taxonomy terms here we can actually even continuously go even further than this and even deeper than that so let's take this we'll go to JavaScript now you could set these settings right away I'm gonna wait to set these and actually go in to edit each one so that way it's easier for you guys to follow along so let's go ahead and go over here and then we'll say um, you know we'll just do ES6 as a different version Yes, and we'll add ES7, and then we'll go to, let's add some under WordPress too. We'll do uh, themes, and we'll do plugins. And you can keep going and add these um, and kind of nest them as, as much as you want. Uh, this is as far as I'm going to go just to kind of keep it simple to make it easy for, easier for you guys to follow along on how everything works. So now that we've got these set up, what we need to do is we need to actually go into and go back to our fields. And so this, as you'll notice, this is the taxonomy, the job categories, and we already have a default field for this. So you'll notice this field right here. Right now it's set up as a multi-select dropdown. You'll notice there's our taxonomy, and this link actually goes to that page we were just on. But you'll notice now under the advanced tab, we have this child dropdown checkbox. So let's go ahead and refresh this page just so you can see how it normally looks whenever you see. So this is how it would normally work without using that dynamic uh, drop down for the child terms. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually enable this setting. 
And you'll notice here, you can also specify different terms. So if you wanted to exclude certain taxonomies from showing up in any of these dropdowns, uh, whether or not, this doesn't matter if you're using the child dropdown or not, you could have this disabled and the exclude terms will still work. Uh, but they need to be in a comma separated values. And if you're not sure how to find out what the term ID is, which it is required that they are the term IDs, all you have to do is just go over here and say I wanted to figure out what the term ID was for design. Click on edit. And you can't see it right now, but this would be the URL. And you'll notice you have right here tag ID. Tag ID is 50. So all I did was went to edit that tag. And on that that term you can actually see there it gives you the ID so if I wanted to exclude design I would just enter 50 and that's just kind of an example of, of what it is I know you guys can't see the URL in the bar on that so uh, I'm not going to do anything with that right now we're just going to do the child drop down stuff and so let's go ahead and select that and tape that there and let's go ahead and save that field now I do want to keep this as a multi-select because we've got let's go ahead and go back to our categories because I do want people to be able to select multiple categories on the top level. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how that works. So we'll refresh this page. Now you'll notice here, now we only have these four again. Now, because I want people to be able to select multiple top level categories is why I left it as a multiple. You could change it to a single drop down if you only wanted them to be able to select one of these uh, top level ones, it's completely up to you. I'm gonna leave it at that just for now, just to kind of do this example. And so, as you see, all these child terms are actually hidden now, even after we added them. And that's because we have set up the dynamic dropdowns. Now, technically, you don't need to change any of the configurations in here, because you'll notice we have the child dropdown. So you can actually select if I wanted any children. So when this design dropdown is shown, so let's go ahead and I'll show it to you real quick. So job category, I select design. Now you'll see this design dropdown shows up and it's exactly the same as the parent. It's a required field. It shows as multiple, so I can select multiple values. But let's say that I only wanted to be able to select one of these design values, but I still wanted to be able to select multiple at the very top level. Well, that's very easy to change. And the way that works is by going back to the category and you'll notice here, and then we have our design. And so I'm going to click on edit. And you'll see here, now we have all of our settings specific to any, uh, to the actual dynamically generated dropdown specific for the children terms of design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this child dropdown instead of being inherit, which by default, all of these fields, if I don't change anything or set any settings on them that are custom, all of them will inherit the settings from their parents. So if the parent is a multiple select, it'll inherit that from it. If it's a required field, it'll inherit it from that. The only time you want to change these settings on each term is whenever you need to force it to be something different. So since I want this to be a single one, I'm going to click here, go to single and change that. And then I'm going to go ahead and update it. And now when I update it, I've updated this to a single one. Now let's go ahead and come back over here and we'll refresh it. We'll see we have our job category design. Now you'll notice now we can only select one value. Now the reason I added this is so you can kind of come up with your own really customized ways of, of how you want this to show because I know there are going to be certain situations where you want users to select multiple values. There going to be certain times you want them to select a single one. Uh, there may also be times where you don't, might not care. So say you don't care what the uh, type of design is just as long as it's in this main top design category. So what you can also do is because that is a required field by default and it would inherit those configurations, we can come in here and we can force it to not require a selection. So right now I'm going to select not required. I'm going to update it. Refresh this field on the page. Come here and we'll select design. And now you'll notice this is an optional field. So the user would be able to submit this listing without selecting anything from here. They can select something, but it's not gonna be required like their parent one is. Uh, so that makes it a little bit easier uh, to kind of configure things as well. Now you'll notice it says here, it says choose a category, but this is specific to our design. So maybe I want it to say something different here. Maybe I want it to say 
uh, you know, choose a design if you want. Well, that's easy to do as well, and you'll notice that's where we have this placeholder value right here. So we can come in here, and the placeholder value is going to be either uh, pulled from the parent field, or it's going to be used as custom one here. So, like I said, let's let's say that we want them to say it to say instead of saying choose a category, to say choose a related design if you want. Let's go ahead and go. Design if you want. Go ahead and save this, update it, refresh that. Come back here, we'll select design, and you'll notice now it says choose a related design if you want. That's because we set that custom value there instead of letting it just inherit the values from the parent field. Now, you'll notice right below here on the industry one. You see how we have the little description area here as well? You'll notice on this one there's not any description here and that's because we don't have anything on the parent but if we wanted to we could add our own custom description here as well. The way that works is actually based off of the actual description field that is included with every taxonomy. So we can come in here and we can say um, let's take a look at this again. We've got logo and web yeah, we can put, do you need logo or web? And we can update that. And now that value will actually show below in the description area. So now we'll go ahead and refresh the page. And we'll come down here and we'll see the design. You'll notice now we see that we have, do you need logo or web? Now you also notice that the job category is now showing as a single select. Uh, reason being is because I had actually gone in there and just changed it from a multi-select to a single select. Uh, reason being, see here, so tax on drop down. Um, so what I did was I changed it to that to go ahead and give you, show you an example of how it works when you do it as a single select, and then we'll also go through some of the other options here as well. So now we've got back here to the job categories, and uh, I'll go ahead and point out as well, if you're not sure, up here in the right-hand corner, the screen options, you'll notice here, you can come over here, and by default, only the drop-down column is going to show to show you what it's set as, but you can also click these other ones to show the other fields and configurations we have on there. Now let's go ahead and get these and so what you'll see here is I'm going to go over here we'll see we have on here I've actually gone and set the development one to multiple and I've also set it to max selections of two. Now reason being I did that is because I want to show you how the max selections work um, as well as to show you how we can go from a single drop down to a multiple drop down. So now what should happen is if I go back over here, come over here, right now you'll notice I have it still on design. If I take design and I go to development, you'll notice now job category is a single select, but the development one is now a multi-select, and I can select multiple values. But you'll notice the maximum I can select is two. Reason being is because as mentioned, we set it here to max selections as two under the development tab itself. Now we come back here and we'll take this away and see we can select WordPress and now you'll notice we have these other ones here. Now with the WordPress one, you'll notice on here we have it set as three as the max. I'm going to open that in a new tab, show you that real quick. You'll see we have it set as three here. Come back over here and one, two, three, and now you'll notice that's separate. So right here on development we have set it as a max of two. And right here below this on WordPress, we set it as a max as three. And this basically gives you the option to configure how many selections to allow, whether you want a single selection, multi-selection on child terms. Uh, it really gives you the ability to create really intricate setups. And uh, I hope you guys are as excited as I am to release this. Uh, it's been a, in the works for a long time now. Uh, there were a lot of issues I had to work through uh, whether it was compatibility issues with themes. Uh, one of the biggest things I was working on was compatibility with the conditional logic feature. Now, I'm not going to show it to you in this video, but you should 
be able to use any existing conditional logic or new conditional logic with this same feature uh, because I did do extensive testing on it and as far as I could find it, it worked without issues. Um, now, as you probably know, if you've used the conditional logic stuff, there are so many different setups and configurations that you could actually create from it. So there's no way for me to really test every possible setup that any user would ever have. Um, but I did test some of the most common ones and the most ones I could think up, think of, and I'm pretty sure they should work. Uh, if you have any issues, you know, it's always a good idea to, to make sure and test this on your site. When you add something like this, if you have existing logic set up, you know, go to the submit page, test it yourself as if you were a user. Uh, it might take you five, 10 minutes to do, but it might also save you, you know, hours of, of time later on. Um, if you do come across any issues, peel, please feel free to open a support ticket. Let me know. Uh, I'll get working on it to kind of resolve that stuff for you. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this and thanks for watching.